Good afternoon. My name is Michelle Ashton. I'm the Director of Communications for the Fish and Wildlife Foundation of Florida. And on behalf of our entire board and staff, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to join us for a conversation about introducing new audiences to the outdoors. A couple of quick housekeeping items before we get going. Can you please double check to make sure that you're muted and you remain muted throughout the duration of our conversation today? There's two exceptions, um, or there's one exception, two ways to uh, participate. The exception is during the question and answer portion at the end. Um, you can use the raise your hand feature and I'll ask you to unmute and talk directly to our presenter. Or if you prefer, you can drop your question in the chat and I can ask it for you. That method is really helpful if you have a question pop up during the conversation, you wanna make sure you don't forget it. So that's all our housekeeping items. I'm really excited to introduce um, one of my favorite grantees that we've partnered with at the foundation, Jovan McNeil. Jovan is the founder and president of Cloud9 Outdoors. Um, we've been able to partner together on two Wildlife Foundation of Florida grants. Those are the Deer Plate grants, um, totaling almost $8,000 to introduce new audiences to the outdoors, particularly hunting. Um, I know Jovan's gonna share some exciting stories from those grants and others. So I'm, I'd like to welcome Jovan. Jovan, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? Can you hear me pretty well? You sound great. All right. Well, my name is Javon McNeil. I'm the founder of Cloud9 Outdoors. <clears throat> I want to be presenting to you just a little bit about how the grant has assisted us, our community outreach um, in the diverse cities in the Tampa Bay area, which is Hillsborough, Pinellas, Polk, and Pasco County. I'm going to go ahead and start my slideshow presentation right now. Give me one moment to make sure I have this going well for you. I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay, Ms. Michelle, can you see that screen right there? I can, yep. Okay. So Cloud on Outdoors was established in December 15th of 2015. Um, I come from a single parent background. My mother and I started fishing at a very, very young age, um, passed down from my great grandmother to my grandmother to my mother to myself. It was basically a way for me to stay active with my mother, stay out of trouble. <clears throat> and there's our bonding moment between my mother and I. So for us bonding, excuse me one second. Javon, I think we've lost your audio. Am I back? You're back. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> so I always wanted to go fishing, hunting, do archery, and do way more than my mother's skill set was. Again, came from inner city. My mom had me at 16 years old. She knew nothing about hunting or archery or any of that nature. So I got of age, I wanted to start a program to assist other families and other people get involved in outdoors and basically live my childhood dream out. With that being said, I started Cloud on Outdoors again, December 15th, 2015. And the goal was to get kids fishing. But with that, I saw a lot more growth needed. So we started doing mentorships in the schools and giving kids um, behavior and great incentives to do a lot better in school by introducing them to the outdoors. So our model is where education and mentorship meets the outdoors. And I'm going to go into the next slide right here. So again, we do fishing, archery, and hunting. And some of the benefits of fishing with the youth is that it builds confidence, it promotes family bonding, enhances motor planning skills, improves coordination, and teaches perseverance. And also with archery and hunting, these are just different things right here you can see on the screen of ways that our activities um, empower and enhance the kids and social skills, along with some pictures you see on that screen right there. Um, we did Boys and Girls Club on the... That's a picture on the top right here is a nice young lady. 
seeing her first grunt ever and seeing the nice, beautiful orange color inside of it. And then I'm going to go on to my next slide right here for you. And over the past six years, we have established that we have reached over 770 youth um, and introduced them to the outdoors with fishing, archery, and hunting. We have a year-round program. So not only do we do outreach programs, we have a year-round program. We get about 25 to 20, 23 to 25 students, and we keep them as like a nice core group where we involve with them, bi-weekly progress reports, make sure the grades are right, report cards are good, um, anything they need for school-wise, we give them supplies. But of those youth, we have graduated, five of our seniors have graduated. We had one graduate with honors. One did graduate a year early as a junior. And all of our seniors have gotten scholarships to go to a trade school or university. And one of our young people went on to do marine science. He's right now at HCC doing his marine science. And he's um, in Apollo Beach, the, and the fisheries over there spawning and doing things with cichlids right now, African cichlids, which is pretty cool. He loves, loves doing that. And on the right-hand side, you see our calendar. Basically, our mate, our school schedule. There's activity where the school's out for holiday, a teacher planning day. We try to plan our activities around those holidays so that the kids are not getting bored and getting in trouble in the streets. We keep them very active and focused on staying out of trouble and being active outdoors. Hey, Javon, really, the really the, quickly, there's, there's yes, like some weird, like, um, metallic -y sounding, like echo feedback stuff happening. Um, so I don't know if there's anything on your end you can do. I just wanted to alert you that that's happening. I can try without the headset. We'll try that real quick. Sure. Is I it think still it's there? Like, yeah. Um, no, it's not, it's coming in and out. So it's not consistent throughout, but when it does happen, we kind of like, lose some of the the words you're saying okay um if it happens again can you let me know and i can try to just take the headset off okay i'll get i'll let okay. you know if that happens again okay all right so we got the grant the first year was between 2020 and 2021 um the grant we got we was using the three r's which was re recruit retain and reactivate um this was used to introduce 12 women and 12 minority youth to our train hunting it was our first time getting the grant so we really wanted to do something we thought we can achieve and get accomplished. Um, each of our participants spent time using the Florida bow hunting, FWC's bow hunting curriculum to teach them about animal um, anatomy, shot placement on the animal to make sure it's very humane, how to use a bow and how to use a crossbow safely. We also went with each participant to do a rifle shooting lesson in case the animal was too far out of distance or we had to put it down in a very humane way, we wanted to teach them how to use a rifle also to be able to do that in a safe manner. Um, all was done by a US, USA archery instructor and an NRA rifle instructor also. Here's a few pictures of the women actually learning about um, loading a rifle. We did practice shots on the rifle. We did it in the classroom and also outdoors in the woods because it's different to see outdoors versus indoors. Um, very engaged was our, was our women in this right here. And this is also using a crossbow. Um, you can see the bottom right picture is teaching them how to draw the crossbow back. And the left picture is teaching them how to find the actual yardage. Um, if it's 30 yards out, what the lines inside of the scope mean, safety hand placement and everything right there, and how to pull the trigger in a safe manner. Now, of these women, every woman in this group right here, we had six women. They all successfully got a hog on the hunt. The cool thing was these come from a group of women who have never been outdoors before, first time hunting. And before we hunted this day, the majority of them was like, hey, we're here for the experience. I'm not sure if I put a hog down or not. Uh, I don't want to see how it is the first time. We had one woman who put a hog down. And after that first hog she put down, she dropped her knees and she boo cried for about two to three minutes. Um, we do give them a warning like, hey guys, you see the animal when you shoot it, it won't pass away right away. It might move a little bit. We do very humanely take the animal down as fast as possible. But she boo cried for two minutes the first time. And then within five minutes, she saw another hog and actually put it down and was able to hunt two hogs on our, on our first day. Um, the lady I'm speaking of right now will be the first lady you see in the next video. 
Um, it's pretty cool to see the first timers reactions to one and two Han again. So this next video I'm gonna show you right now is actually her speaking first and then another portion of the ladies who are when hunting with us will be speaking about their experience on this first hunt. And do you have audio on that one, Michelle, on your end? Not yet. Okay. From Plant City. And I'm really thankful and blessed. Yep, I can hear her now. Be out here and be shown how the whole process of um, coming out here, hunting, getting the food, and bringing it back to the table. So I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, Tanya from Tampa. Uh, first experience. Uh, I didn't think I would want to do it again, but I'm ready to do it again already. So, what a good time. Shirley from Riverview. I feel different. <laughs> I thought I would do it again. Alicia from Wesley Chapel. Um, I want to thank Hillary and Javon. It was way more awesome than I thought it was going to be. Um, I would do it again. Definitely in the same setting, though. That might felt like I had my bearings. So, so that's just a few women there. Um, a lot of another thing that I forgot to mention was. A lot of people are not used to natural meat. When I say natural meat, I mean, it's not processed with all the chemicals and stuff inside of it. And a lot of people think pork has a certain taste to it. So when we get the meat for them, we actually process it and have it um, done with the meat processor. So when they had the meat and tried it for the first time, I got a lot of feedback back from people, a lot of messages. Oh my gosh, it tastes so different than the store brought meat. I love it. My husband loves it. Oh my gosh, my kids are eating all the burgers. So not only did they get experience as hunting for the first time, they got the experience of tasting meat that they harvested themselves that were not full of chemicals and stuff in the factories is actually done by themselves and with the process we have locally in Riverview. And I've had the last one right here reached out to me, her husband and three kids also want to go hunting with us. We're seeing set up that whole process with them right now to get them educated, training in the woods also. And then the next year, oops, sorry, I my slides out of order. So the next year we applied for the grant and we realized that although people were getting the experience of hunting, we had no way of make sure they got the license. So we applied again, we said, hey, let's go for a smaller number. Let's cover the cost of their hunter safety course online because there's different models online to do it with. Um, most of them cost around $30. So we put in a grant this year, that I mean last year, to cover the cost of the hunter safety course. Um, we dropped it down to five adults and five youth instead of doing 10 and 10, just make sure the funding was there for their hunter safety course. What you see right here is two of the eight we have already completed. Um, these are two young men right here who've done the hunter safety course. I did cover their names and their address on, but the ages of the, the year of their birth was 2006 and 2008. So we're getting very young people out here to get their certificates for license because as you know, licenses in the state of Florida for fishing hunting goes towards money for um, grants, money for people's employment, everything that nature. So the more licenses we have, the more money the state gets from the federal government. So I think it was very important to have more people get licensed of doing the actual, just the hunting portion. We had a follow-up system to make sure that they actually had a course and a way to get the license. The pictures here you see are some of our youth who are with us. This young lady over here got her very first hog. As you see, she's dragging it out of the woods. We do teach them all aspects of hunting, and we think that you know, pulling your own, <laughs> your own harvest out of the woods is a big thing to do as part of the whole experience. So she is pulling it by herself. We do assist with them if it's too heavy, but she was doing a great job by herself. On the right, we have two young men right here um, who also went on their first hunt. And got a nice hog. The dad was very proud of them right here. And then the next slide is a big success story. This young man was a um, elementary kid. He was in fifth grade, fourth grade. He's in fifth grade now. He was having a very hard time in the school system with behavior issues. Um, he was getting referrals all the time on the verge of getting suspended a lot. And it was about to kick him out of school. His guidance counselor reached out to me about how can we improve this kid's behavior in school. It wasn't a bad in grades, his behavior was really bad. So when we met with them, we gave them the choice of doing the fishing and hunting, 
is very, very excited about hunting. So we told him, hey, you do well in your pork hearts, you do well in behavior, you get no referrals, we'll put you on a hawk hunt. This kid went gay straight referrals, any behavior issues at all in school. Um, that reward for him was getting him on a hawk hunt. This was his very first hunt, very first time leaving St. Petersburg, Florida. We do a hawk hunt up in Cedar Key. He's not been with it all. This is his very, very first time even leaving the city to experience this. Um, as you see the smile on his face on both pictures, the picture on the right is him with his hockey harvest sit using a crossbow. And he had a little knife in his pocket. He wanted to feel like a hunter, so he had a nice little knife in his pocket that he loved holding on to. And then the picture on the left-hand side is just part of the meat he got from the actual harvest himself. And he was super proud of being able to put food on his table for his family. And um, that's where it just really gets me because to see him turn around his life so well with just something else so we could take for granted as hunting was just an amazing, amazing thing to see. And this is still one of my most proudest moments right here, seeing his kids change um, just overall in behavior and education-wise. That's one of my touchy stories that I like a lot about him. Sorry, get a little emotional on that kid. Um, this right here was also more from that from the last grant that we have right now. Um, this is Xavier right here. Xavier and his mom is actually coming from a divorced family. Um, so Xavier was part of our group of kids. You'll see the next group also. We had four boys together. Um, we had to schedule our training classes around Xavier's schedule because he'd be with his dad one week and mom the next. And mom wanted him to be more involved in the outdoors, be more around with the kids. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little emotional because I know the story. Sorry. Um, so Xavier came with us bi-weekly and was able to do archery. Um, he used the bow and arrow, met other kids his age, and really opened up. Xavier's actually really reserved and really shy. And he grew a lot in the program. He really opened up a lot more. And he was just a cool kid. He's still with us right now. Um, so that's a picture of his hog right there. He gets the whole picture. And his mom also went because she was a woman. And, and she um, did the whole program with us also. And she hunted. And I think it was cool to have the, both the mother and son both get a hog together. And just a great experience for the family. They love the meat. Um, but with him just having to juggle between two households and Mr. J, I want to go hunting with, I want to go shoot archery, can we do it this day? And really balancing a schedule was really heavy to do, but we got it done. It was just a great experience for him to do that. And then these are here. Um, he's actually three brothers, mom's a single mom in Tampa Bay. Um, one of her sons to be outdoors and learn something and just bond together. And this young man right here on the left-hand side, he was not strong enough to pull back a, a bow um, to the actual hunting poundage. So the, our harvest is a hog in Florida. The minimum you should pull back is 35 pounds to get a nice ethical shot on the animal. He wasn't able to pull back 35 pounds. He's pulling back 20, but he really wanted to go to hunt with us. So we trained him on a crossbow and he was able to get a hog on his crossbow, which is amazing. He still got the chance to hunt with his brothers. And then on the right-hand side, you see all three brothers together <laughs> pulling a nice big boar they got um, out of the woods together. And just that teamwork and to see that moment of these three young men together, not fighting, not arguing, and getting to hunt together was just an, an amazing experience to see. And all that is possible by this plate right here. Um, the deer plate of Florida. Um, that the Wildlife Foundation does is an amazing thing they have that gives funding to people and organizations like my organization for hunting. So they customize a the plate and put it on our vehicle to drive around and show wherever we go that, you know, this means so much to us. And we're so grateful for their partnership that they are now part of us on our truck. And then we drive around Tampa Bay, we drive from here to Cedar Key, all around Florida. People know that we support the Wildlife Foundation of Florida with our customized tag, Cloud Nine Outdoors. Number one was taken, number two was used for one of our trailers, and we put number three for our vehicle. So all this is possible by the foundation. We want to say thank you to the foundation for helping us out with the point in time. At the point, at this point in time, I'm gonna open up to questions or any feedback you might have. Michelle, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen if that's okay with you. Yep, great. And um, while we, folks, so yeah, you can, raise your hand or um, drop questions in the chat. Javon, there is still some um, 
audio weirdness. So while we wait for some questions, I don't know if you want to switch out headphones or um, if you want to just power through it for the for the Q and A. Um, um, so I am going to put in a survey link in the chat. Um, we'd love to get folks feedback from you on um, on today and what you'd like to see us do for future Zoom. So I'm just going to go ahead and share that link while I look for questions. Um, um, I can hear you, but it's kind of faint. Javon actually was better was better with the um, with the headphones. Um, let's see. Am I back on headphones? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, the sounds good. Okay. Um, let's Sorry, see. I need to get emotional all those stories and just those kids really. I know the backgrounds of all of them. So just, I see pictures and I go for it again. It brings back memories. <laughs> well, you know why we wait for some questions? Maybe you could talk a little bit. One of the stories I've loved that you've, you've shared with me are about um, some of the kids who found like future interests um, from the hunts. Like there was the kid who got involved in there's an EMT now, right? And didn't yes. they, yeah, if you want to share that story. Yeah, so one of our seniors who graduated, um, he was actually, his brother was good. He was in juvenile detention. Um, he got out, the mother was having issues with him. Um, just, you know, he's the older brother and the brothers are fighting. We got them together, took them to the program. They didn't fight at all with the new program. They did a hunt together and during the hunting portion of that hunt, I mean, during the harp, the, uh, According to the hog portion of the animal, he was like, oh, that's the lungs, that's the kidneys, that's the heart. I'm like, Yo, dude, what are you, how do you know this stuff? He was like, oh, I love, I love anatomy. I, I just love this stuff. This intrigues me so much. And I says, you ever thought about doing like EMT or nursing or something? He says, no, man, that's not for me. I'm not into it. I don't know. It's like, dude, you know the body pretty well. You really should get into like EMT or nursing. Um, he graduated. Um, from his high school, got most improved student award. And we actually founded him, we gave him a scholarship to get his EMT school done and he's an EMT now. And that's all from like a hunting thing we did with this kid who'd never been outside, never harvested an animal, but he knew every part of that animal. And it just, it was just amazing to me to see that and see where he's at now, saving lives and <laughs> giving back to the community. I love that story. Um, we have a, a message um, from Gallimore saying uh, their boys love the hunt. They were super excited and learned a lot. They're ready for another one. Thank you. Mother of three boys, so. Oh, she's in here. Oh, that's awesome. She was, in <laughs> I know she was involved in this one. That's cool, yeah, I love her boys. <laughs> so maybe you could talk, could you tell us a little bit about how COVID has affected your programs? Like, did you have to pause or were you guys, since you were outside, were you able to continue your programming? So as you saw in the first video, um, some of the ladies were wearing masks the first time we hunted, although it was outdoors, they still want to be precautious about it. Um, with COVID, we got semi-lucky. Um, the governor said like fishing was an essential thing about living. So fishing, what people realize is like, it's essential for life because it's something you can do to catch food for your family. So the governor gave us the okay to still fish. So we did stop doing a lot of programs for fishing I mean, for it, we just stopped doing like a lot of our bigger stuff. Like we can't take out 50 kids on a boat or was able to do smaller things and the hunting was still good to do because we can do smaller portions of it. Like two people here, a family here and it impacted us, but not as much as we thought it would have been. Uh, my great. board shut us down. I'm sorry, I mean, take it back. My board did shut me down for like almost a year. Because <laughs> <laughs> when kids are doing like, I saw soccer's going back and baseball teams are going back and football teams are playing again. Like, let's go. We got kids are doing things now. They're like, nope, hold up. You're not doing nothing yet. I'm like, but I want to. And, <laughs> you know, being the president, you want to say, I want to do it. But I do listen to my board and I do have a board there for a reason. So I don't make irrational decisions. Um, but yes. Did you, um, and I know you've talked about like your graduation rate and all like have the impact just having, I know you, you stick with kids through graduation and a number of them come back and volunteer. Do you want to talk anything about that, about the, the kids who've been through the program and now are mentoring other kids? So, yeah, so we have 
Um, Malik is one of our main kids. He's actually doing marine biology now. And I have a kid named Deshaun. Deshaun was my very first student who came through and graduated through us. Um, he got his degree in H for his certificate in H HVAC. He's now doing HVAC for houses and everything, making a living, making a really good living for himself. And Malik is still in school right now. Um, we say our programs to age 18. That's when the program ends. But these kids like become like part of my like my kids. So they always call me. They still keep up with me. I keep up with them. Um, they come back up out with events. I mean, it's it's a great feeling to see. It's been six years. So a kid I had, he was. 14 is now probably 19 to 20 and you don't realize how fast these young men grow and so you go from middle school to high school like man hold on that's crazy or your mom's pregnant when my wife is pregnant and our both our sons are the same age and it's been four years almost now I'm thinking like you don't see the time until it's like there until it's like they're gone so it's to me it's just cool to just be a part of that process like I'm not a father figure. I'm not taking that part of the life, but I'm their mentor and to have them respect that and still want to come back and help out um, just means a lot. And the parents, I gotta give it to the parents. The parents are also awesome. I'm not easy sometimes like with keeping up with like dates, <laughs> but the moms and dads always are there. They always show up for events. Um, sometimes they cancel things. If my truck had an issue or if they change plans, they always cool with that. And Except Miss Gillimore with the kids, the three boys uh, with archery, like changing the schedule to every other Tuesday. And hey, we need to make sure the online thing is done first before we get next. We have to do the online on safe, safety course first before we do archery again. And the parents keeping up with these kids also. I'm not there in the household, so the parents keeping track of the kids and keeping up with them goes a very, very long way to what we do as successful wise. Amazing. Have any of the women from the video, do you know if any of them have been out hunting again? So one of them actually, um, one of them had done a turkey hunt. <laughs> um, the other one has contacted me about her family coming out. The other one has mentioned like their uncle wants to get with them hunting and stuff. So we have a lot of feedback with that. But I did kind of make it more like you have to do 160 first before you do anything else with me. Um, just again, we make sure the license process goes to <laughs> the hunting license is a big thing for the funding for we want to go there. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Let's see. I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. Um, we did. You did get a message from Jessica saying that she loves seeing your passion. Um, so if anybody, you know, I don't want to cut anybody short. So if you have a question, feel free to use the raise your hand feature or, or drop it in the chat. Um, but I'm not going to keep you on if, if everybody's gotten a uh, gotten what they what they came here for oh wait looks like we just got one. Oh, anita said she appreciated hearing the stories and learning more about your organization and the hunts and she appreciated the deer plate promo so thank you yes Dylan. i'm a big <laughs> i'm big on the deer plate now i love it i think it looks awesome in my truck <laughs> so yeah, we, you know, it's interesting we get feedback um, like from the, the state about, you know, what kind of cars have the plates and um, deer plate is very popular amongst truck owners. So you're in good <laughs> company. All right. Great, guys. Well, Javon, I really appreciate your time. I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to um, to say before we got off that you haven't gotten a chance to share yet. No, I don't want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we are just really grateful for um, for you and all your work and just thrilled to be a partner, honored to be a partner. Um, thank you everyone for taking time out to join us today. And um, we are recording this and um, I, I know we'll be able to, um, we'll share it the same way we shared it, uh, the, the meeting information with you over at eBlast. We'll also put it on social. Um, so if you'd like to share it with anybody who missed this conversation, we'll have that ability. Um, we're having people wondering the best way to find you, Javon. Do you want to do a plug for um, Cloud9's website, how to reach you, all those things? Um, we're on Facebook. Our, our website is just cloud9outdoors.org. The word nine is spelled out. And then same thing on Facebook. It's just cloud9outdoors, Inc. Uh, we're very responsive to all of those forms of communication. Um, you can also see some things on there. Our calendar has been updated on our website as of last night. 
So we do have a website with the dates and everything for our upcoming events there. I'll be taking volunteers, so. Oh, perfect, yeah. So we, um, so ways you can support Javon, you can volunteer. I'm sure on the website, there's ways to donate. Always, if you need a new license plate, um, it's time to renew. Please consider the deer plate that helps fund us to do um, projects like show on those $25 um, extra from those type of specialty plates really make a difference to help us make um, donations. And you can now do that um, plate ordering on our website, wildlifeflorida.org. We now are able to fill um, plate orders online, which is really exciting. And on our website as well, you can see lists of past grants we've been given out, which includes Cloud9 Outdoors as grants. Um, if you have any questions about any of that, there's contact information on our website for me. If it's grant specific, I can send you over to my colleague Anita who handles all of our plate grants. Um, so I think, you know, Javon, I'm not seeing any question, any additional questions. Um, so I'm going to, oh wait, looks like, oh, Ka Kathy over at um, Suncoast is saying, thank you. So oh, thank you, Kathy, happy. for joining. It's good to see your name. All right. Well, I want to thank everyone again and um, look for the recording if you'd like to share it. And thank you, Javon, again for your time you for and your, time. your stories. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for the time. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Bye, everyone.